Hello everybody, uh, my name is Michele Pavanello, I'm a professor at Rutgers University and I am joined today by a postdoc in my lab, uh, Shue Sheng Xiao. Hi everyone. Okay, so he is the author of the um, code that we will um, talk about today, um, which is QEPI. QEPI is a version of Quantum Espresso entirely in Python. Uh, what it does is to use F90 wrap to um, interface the Fortran code of Quantum Espresso with uh, Python functionalities. It is non-standard in the sense that you can um, not, it's not just a wrapper that allows you to compute energies and forces or stresses like most wrappers would do. In this case, uh, you can use Python to access wave functions, density, run molecular dynamics, and also to give to Quantum Espresso external potentials. You can do non-standard things such as provide QE with a external potential, run a single SCF cycle, provide a different external potential, run another SCF cycle, and so forth. You can also um, run such workflows as accessing wave functions, at every time step of a molecular dynamics simulations. You can use them for whatever applications you have in mind. So I think um, you will like it. And uh, in this video, we're going to show you how to install it, how to use it. It's going to be about 10, minute long, uh, 10 minutes long. So uh, thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy it. Here I am on a uh, supercomputer called Calibre. I've generated a brand new directory called Video2 because we also did a video one, but um, we decided to redo it. Um, well, let's start with when you are on a computer cluster, it's never good to use the head node for pretty much anything but logging in. So we're going to um, allocate some resources on the compute nodes. In this case, I'm allocating a single node for 12 hours, 32 processors per node. Okay, here we are. I'm going to purge all the modules that I had previously loaded because I want to um, load new ones. And the way that we are going to um, compile our codes today is using GCC, GFortran. And as you can see here, I'm also loading Python 3 and CMake. All right. The next thing to do is always good practice to use a virtual environment, uh, especially when dealing with Python. And for that, we're going to use uh, Venv. We have noticed that Conda can um, give some trouble. So we're just going to use uh, Python from uh, the Linux, Linux distributions. So we do source activate source and bin activate. This activates the uh, Python virtual environment. And now we're going to start installing Python packages. The very first thing that we're going to do is to install, to upgrade pip, cyton, and wheel. You notice what I'm using here. I'm using Python minus m pip. So we're going to use pip, but we install all the packages into the local site package directory which is inside this uh, virtual environment directory okay uh, that's done now, the way we Pythonize Quantum Espresso is by using F90 wrap. So the next thing to do is to install F90 wrap. Okay, that's how we do it. <clears throat> it's going to have to do some building and also gets latest numpy and it's done okay 
next thing to do is, of course, to uh, get and build uh, Quantum Espresso. We're going to use version 6.5. Okay, now we have it. You can see uh, we have the star GC file. We're going to unpack it. It's unpacking everything. Let's see. That's where we have it. So we're going to the Quantum Espresso directory. The next thing to do is to configure uh, the build. Uh, we're going to use GCC as we mentioned before. So here I'm going to show you uh, we set up the CC variable with GCC, the MPIF90 variable with MPIF90, which is one that we have loaded with the modules. Every computer is different, every cluster is different, so you may have to do slightly different uh, settings depending on, on your cluster. Then the next thing we're going to do is to give some options to the uh, configure script of Quantum Espresso. Most of you are familiar with this. We're not going to use Kalapak. We're not going to use OpenMP, but we enable MPI. And then the next set of um, options flags are for uh, generating uh, local static libraries, which are needed for uh, QEPI. Okay. All right, now that we have configured, we can, <clears throat> we can compile uh, PW. And the way we're going to do it is by simply do make PW minus J. So how many threads we're going to use for the compilation? We have 32 processors on this particular compute node, so I'm going to use 32 threads. OK, it's done now. Great, so what we're going to do here is to save the location of the Quantum Espresso build so the way I do it is just saving it into the variable QE uh, and I just run essentially the PWD command and then save the output of that into the QE variable. All right. Now uh, we are here. Um, what we do here now is to um, clone the QEPI repo. It's closed right now, but by the time you'll watch this video, it'll be open. Wrong repo. Okay, this is the repo that we want. And the reason for this uh, additional option is because we um, have also interfaced um, Davide Ceresoli's uh, CE TDDFT with QEPI. Uh, meaning we can run it with QEPI. <clears throat> and so as you clone QEPI, it may also clone uh, some related modules. OK, like I said, this is closed right now, but it'll be open. OK. We've checked it out, as you can see, has also checked out the uh, CETDDFT, which we're not going to show today, but if you're interested, we can at a later date. Uh, then we have to install uh, QEPI. The way that we do it is by giving QE, uh, QEPI setup.py information about where the Quantum Espresso has been um, built. QEDIR equal QE. Remember, we have saved that. And then we just do Python minus m pip install. And install the setup UI that is in this directory. Wait, I need to go to QEPI first and then run this. OK. So it's going to. Um, determine the dependencies, numpy, f90, wrap, they're satisfied, and it's going to um, execute setup.py, that includes some uh, Fortran code 
uh, compilation. Certain files in QE are replaced with uh, the QEPy version of those files, not many, just a few. Uh, we can be more specific if you're interested in a follow-up video. Okay, now we have QEPy and it's fully functioning. So let's, let's use it. Um, we can go to the example directories. We have two, let's start with uh, the simplest way to use a um, Python uh, version of Quantum Espresso, which is to run just simply molecular dynamics. But I would like to show you uh, how this is done. Um, see, the very first thing that this script does is to determine whether uh, there is MPI for Py installed, and we haven't installed it, so it's it's going to fail this try, and it's going to then um, um, use none as a communicator, which automatically is um, is MPI com world. And so QE, the underlying uh, QE code will use MPI com world for its um, for its use. Um, okay, he's importing uh, a QEPy calculator. This calculator is needed in ASE to run calculations. And by the way, we haven't installed ASE yet, so we're going to have to do that before we run this script. Uh, the calculator is set here uh, using an input file, this QE.in. That's just used to get some information such as the cutoff and a few other things, you know, the geometry of the system uh, that are needed to run a calculation. Then it sets the uh, calculator inside the atoms class of ASE. And with that, we can set um, initial velocities, uh, thermostat, and go. And you can see here, you define what to print um, uh, for every time step. And what's printed here is the potential energy. You see A is the atoms class. Get potential energy is uh, essentially takes the energy coming from QE and kinetic energy is the kinetic energy at that particular time. And then of course, of course, you see that if you have MP MPI for pi, then it's going to then print this uh, only for rank zero. You'll see that it's actually is going to print it for all the ranks because uh, we're going to run this first without MPI for pi. And yeah, um, then of course you get a trajectory file out of it. We're going to run just five time steps. So let's do that. First, let's uh, install ASE, Python minus M, if install ASE. ASE has several packages that uh, of dependencies, <clears throat> so it takes a little bit, not too much though. Okay, done. So now we can run this, and the way we run it is just simply in Python uh, test ASC NVT. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to prepend MPI run minus NP4. Let's run it. Okay, so it's, it's going through the um, ND time steps and it's printing. You can see it's printing. In a weird way, meaning it's printing four times the same thing because we haven't installed MPI for Pi. So let's do it. Done. So now we can run this again. And it's going to use MPI for Pi to generate the communicator for QEPi. Now, this is important. If you wanted to use a different communicator for uh, QEPy and then from QEPy to QE, you could just give as a uh, input the communicator of your choice. This is important for my group because we use QEPy for density embedding simulations. And for that, we need to give uh, a custom communicator to every Concham instance. And um, uh, that functionality is very important to us. Okay. Um, let me show you something else. This file here, uh, test ASE underscore SCF. Um, it's an interesting file because it shows you really the power of uh, QEPy. It's not just about potential energies, forces, and stresses. QEPy actually can 
give you the ability to both give an external potential to quantum espresso, which then is used in the self-consistent field uh, routine uh, to then generate the orbitals, the uh, waves and uh, total density. But also you can interact with these densities as they come out of QEPI or with, the, with those orbitals as they come out of QEPI. In the simplest of cases, you can do this at every time step of a molecular dynamic simulation. Here, you see, you can just simply use the built-in method, get pseudo density, or get density to get the total density in case you have pseudo potentials with core density. Um, you can get the wave functions at every time step or whenever you like. This is really important because if you want to use quantum espresso for non-standard workflows, sometimes it's hard with a Fortran code base, but with this, everything is at your fingertips. Let's run this, uh, see what we get. MPI run minus MP4 as the CSCF. I should use Python. It runs the SCF and then it prints these things. Obviously, we're not going to print all of the forces or all of the wave functions. It would be just very inconvenient to look at, but we're just going to print the very first element of these arrays. And OK, uh, this is what this is what it is. All right. Um, let's look at the SCF examples. Uh, these are, I think, maybe uh, um, interesting also in case you wanted to give uh, QEPI an external potential, you all you have to do is to simply uh, instance this class called embed. Once you instance this class, you can give it an external potential of your choice as long as, um, uh, well, actually, yeah, you can give any type of external potential of your choice. And then you just simply call electrons and electrons will run the SCF. And uh, compute total energies. The way we compute total energies for convenience is by using the um, PW2 Casino module. Um, yeah, those total energies are still just as good as the regular total energies of Quantum Espresso, perhaps. Um, yeah, just as good. And um, well, you can output forces uh, and then stop the run. Well, let's run it just to see how that works. Uh, let's just do Python test PWCF. This is going to run on a single processor. It runs the SCF and it's done. And this is what the um, various energy uh, terms look like in QEPI from, from this PW to Casino tool. And with that, I should say a few more things. One of them is that QEPI also allows you to read wave function files, restart from them. You can actually read wave function files of older versions of Quantum Espresso prior to version, I believe, 6.1, uh, before uh, there was a shift to a new uh, XML um, uh, version. And uh, yeah, so we hope you like it. And uh, just let us know if you have questions. Thank you.